Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Admissions Live. Tonight, I am joined by Marty Aegis from Mongoose Research, and we're talking about an admissions-first approach to mobile web. I'm also going to pick his brain about text messaging strategies, because that's something that I'm very curious about. Um, and if you're joining us for the first time, this is Admissions Live, your weekly web show for admissions professionals. We're part of the Higher Ed Live network, and uh, we bring you professional development every week on higheredlive.com. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I just came back from Penn State's web conference last week, and the whole theme of the conference was um, mobile web, um, thinking about mobile first and responsive design. So I've got all of these topics on the brain. Um, if you're following along on the live broadcast, be sure to tweet any of your questions um, to the back channel using the hashtag admissions live, and you can tweet at me at Ashley Hen um, before or after this broadcast. Right, so I want to jump right into the show, but we can't do that without giving shout outs to those sponsors that make Admissions Live possible. Admissions Live is brought to you by Welcome to College. Welcome to College believes that it's all in the visit and have created web and mobile applications to help institutions measure and manage their most critical recruitment tool, the college visit. Visit welcometocollege.com to learn more or tweet at Welcome to College for a demo. And their Twitter handle is Welcome Number Two College. Admissions Live is sponsored by Scavenger, a Google funded mobile game about going places, doing challenges, and earning points. Scavenger for universities can be used to train students and staff, including RAs. Check out how LaRoche College did this by heading over to the Scavenger U blog. Admissions Live is sponsored by Zinch.com, the preferred destination by over 3 million students to research schools and scholarships and to showcase themselves as more than just a test score. Over 1,000 colleges and universities around the world partner with Zinch to attract and enroll best fit students on the largest college search social network in the world. To learn more about Zinch, email outreach at Zinch.com or tweet at social admission. And last but certainly not least tonight, Admissions Live is sponsored by Integral. Check out their latest white paper, The Class of 2016 Community Analysis, to learn how creating communities for incoming students can improve admissions yield. Be sure to head over to Integral.com to check out their latest research, including this white paper that is available to download for free. And without further ado, I'm going to bring on Marty Aegis. He's the Vice President of Marketing at Mongoose Research, and he brings 26 years of marketing experience to the show tonight. Um, he also ha has four wonderful children that keep him grounded in the latest technologies. So I want to bring you up on screen here, Marty. And say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Very well. And we're only... Uh, you know, uh, a few uh, miles away from each other. Marty's uh, tuning in from Buffalo, so we're representing Western New York tonight, um, both feeling the steamy humidity that's out there, <laughs> uh, yeah. but trying to stay cool. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, this topic is, uh, I think, on it should be on um, most college admissions professionals' minds, um, as our communications are certainly changing. Um, with these new technologies. So I'm really excited to get into the show, but do you want to um, give us some more of your background in higher education? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I've been working with uh, Dave Marshall, who was with Liquid Matrix uh, for a number of years, and they dominated the admissions marketing awards for nine consecutive years. Um, and, and at the time, email marketing was really the key thing to reach prospective students. And they had developed a content management system, which allow schools to reach out to students through email marketing. Mm -hmm. um, Liquid Matrix was ultimately sold to Datatel after they had developed about 200 admissions and, and college websites. And Dave was with Datatel for a number of years, left Datatel, and while he was in his early retirement, he suddenly woke up with one night and said, we're going to talk about mobile communications and students from here on out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no more email. Yeah. And so that was the founding of... Uh, uh, Mongoose Research, and that's where we are today. 
Great, and I think we have Dave following along in the back channel, or at least I hope he is. He was out there on Twitter earlier tonight. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, and, um, you know, we're certainly going to talk about mobile technology, but why is this so important for admissions folks right now? Well, you know, I've been involved with marketing for over 26 years. And the number one thing we like to tell people is speak to your customer at their level of self-interest and speak to them in their dialogue. And so while just like all of us as consumers receive mail and telephone calls and television broadcasts and all sorts of hits toward us, we all have a preferred method of communication. Mm -hmm. And so what we're saying is, you know, with the youth of today and the proliferation of smartphones and the growth, the explosive growth of it, uh, why are we still communicating with them? Although it's a good medium, but, you know, with four kids and, and going through college and everything, I, we received all the packets and the telephone calls and the emails. And I learned early on, after not seeing my daughter's face for about three years, because she was staring at the smartphone, um, that she liked to be communicated through, through uh, text messaging. And same with my son. And even my own kids say to me now, if you want to reach us, Dad, text us. That's right. So yeah. it's real important that we reach out to students in the way they want to be talked to. Yeah, that's uh, and we're gonna dig into that even more. Um, so you then started a little bit with um, this text messaging research, um, and what can you share with us before we jump into mobile web? Um, what what do you what is Mongoose doing in that area? What have you been doing? Um, I know we have a little bit of a fear um, of communicating over text message, um, similar to that fear that we had with social networking um, before people kind of bought into that being okay, um, that there's a certain level of invasive or, um, you know, what kind of strategy, the strategy has got to be really important because are you going with an opt-in um, approach? Um, are you just texting students? Without yeah. asking them, uh, I yeah. want to hear. I want to hear what um, you're doing with text before we jump into mobile. Sure, the strategy is is very important, um, and the the cell phone, the smartphone, is the most personal and private tool that uh, any student, anybody has. Right. And similar to the can spam rules, uh, we really can't text somebody unsolicited. Right. Um, so what we advise our schools to do is we build a, a text messaging database for them. Uh, we give them opportunities to help their students become part of that uh, text messaging community uh, through their admission sites. And we ask them to opt in. And only then will we launch outbound texts. Right. But what we found is those students have a significantly higher uh, actual uh, going in an inquiry to an enrollment uh, status than any other group of students. Sometimes as many as five to six times higher. Yeah, and that's a great point um, for um, admissions folks that are trying to predict all different kinds of indicators, trying to predict applications, trying to predict yield um, for enrolling students, that if you have students that are willing to interact on this invasive kind of communication tool um, that you can probably count those students at um, uh, at a higher interest level and more likely to enroll. And is that what you've seen through your research? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, as admission counselors, you, know, you have so many hours in the day and you have to find out where you can spend your time. We found out that while we at St. Mary's in Texas, one of our clients, only about five, just less than 5% of the students opted in for texting. 33% mm -hmm. uh, of their applicants came out, actually enrollments came out of that pool. Mm -hmm. So it even helps you as an admissions counselor to practice some good time management as to while you're not going to ignore any other students, where you're going to focus some of your attention on those that are most interested. Sure. You know, one thing to say about that, some people have asked me saying, well, did they enroll for texting because they're the most interested in the school? Well, one of the things I think is important for the schools to do is to reach out to students and say, hey, we love you. We want you to come to our institution. And if they don't see the mail and they don't get the phone calls and they don't see the emails, they think you don't care about them. But when they see the text, they say, wow, this school really cares about me. Maybe I want to go there. So we think that adds a lot to the students who enroll. Yeah, and that's a really interesting point, too, um, the question the students that are going to opt into text, well, those are the ones that are already interested anyway. 
Um, but for me, I found that it's much harder these days to find those students that are really interested and to identify them. Um, and something like this, I would think, would be a way to identify that student. Um, so I, I think it's a great approach. Um, and just quickly, if we could go over some of the kinds of text messaging that um, colleges are using, what kinds of what kinds of messages, what kinds of strategy is sure. built behind that? Sure, that's that's a real important thing too. Is what we tell the schools is don't barrage your prospective students with a lot of text messages. Use it for important events. Okay. Um, you know, as a parent, uh, I had to go through about ten straight years of filling out the FOSFA. And mm -hmm. actually, my final year with my son, I forgot. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so that's one important event. As a matter of fact, the parents can sign up for text messages, too, so they can be aware of those important events. Mm -hmm. But uh, a FOSFA application, uh, deadlines for, you know, getting in your information, yep. but encouraging them to perhaps take a visit yep. or an open house. Um, so there's a whole number. We say important dates and important information, but don't send out frivolous communications because that's the quickest way for a student to opt out when we feel right. the garage in the garage. Great. Great. Um, and so today we really wanted to focus on mobile web and best practices. Um, and I, I know that you have a few different client institutions that you're going to share um, some examples and case studies with. Um, but what specifically are you working with your clients on with this approach? Well, our approach on the mobile web is really um, because we, again, our company started in the text messaging arena. Um, we realized that we wanted to give the students as many opportunities to to log to to log in and sign up for text messaging, and they're going to do that when they're looking at their prospective students. So um, we take an admissions first approach. Our mobile sites are really geared for the admissions departments of the schools. We're not looking to replace the desktop uh, entire portal. We're not trying to put the entire portal on a on a smartphone. We're taking on uh, the very important tasks that need to be accomplished uh, from a prospective student. And there was a study by Noel Levis that said that, you know, 20 to 25% of students, if they don't have a good experience the first time visiting a site on a smartphone, will disregard that school altogether. So we think 1% losing them is too much. We don't want to see our, our clients lose that. Great. Great. Fantastic. So um, in, in, broader university communications, um, when you're talking about developing either a mobile site or a responsive site or mo simply mobile access to your university's information on the web, um, I want to hear a little bit of your argument as to why this should be an admissions facing forward site sure. and not what my homepage is facing out, um, which is really, uh, a mishmash of things that are important to the university um, and um, a lot of curated storytelling kind of content um, with links to get to admissions and to get to academic pages. Um, I want to hear more of that admissions first argument. Yeah, well, the whole argument for admissions first is um, students, potential students, use smartphones for reference materials. The desktop portal, while extremely important, is used more for exploring. And um, we'll find that we actually have a slide, and I don't know if you can put it up, but it was at Champlain College. Um, the majority of students that visited the uh, admissions first website were first time visitors. Whereas those that uh, spend time on the main portal are repeat visitors. So repeat students are using it to look at things like bus schedules and uh, you know in-depth details on courses. But the first time students are looking at and trying to find out key information like uh, can I get in? You know, what is the tuition cost? Uh, what are some of the academic programs offered? Um, how can I schedule a visit? And we actually give them on the admissions first website an opportunity to sign up for text messaging as well. But we keep it we keep it uh, short, we keep it condensed, and we keep it very easy to navigate. Navigation is extremely important when you're dealing with a small screen. 
like uh, an iPhone or an Android. Um, and I obviously um, being a um, company that also wants to do the research behind um, what they're practicing. Um, can you share a little bit from your clients that have taken an admissions first approach um, to give us that kind of hard data behind why this works? Well, um, and, and I have to say something about our, our company name, Mongoose Research. We're, we're not really a research company. Uh, what we are is, a, is an admissions uh aid company. I mean, we're helping schools to increase admissions and to to increase the yield overall of students that are uh, attracted to schools. Mm -hmm. But research showed us, we did analytics on uh, the websites, the early websites we did at St. Mary's College and Champlain University. Yep. And we found that most students uh, requested a number of things. And I, uh, some of them were trying to pull up here, but what academic programs uh, is the number one uh, thing that students go to from the admissions perspective. So taking a look at first-time visitors to the main website, we knew that, you know, academic programs was number one. And of course, if a student says, I want to major in biology or, or pre-med, they're going to go look, does this school offer those programs for me? Um, and then it kind of varies, but things are about the college, you know, can I get in? Maps and directions are real important. There's nothing more frustrating and as Dave and I travel around to visit some of our clients the first time, it's like, where do we park? We wish we could use uh, their mobile site to tell us, you know, give us a little map of where we should be parking. And then, of course, things like um, financial aid. Um, but we, we don't really put more than six to, at the very maximum, ten links on a mobile site. Whereas your your main site, your desktop site, may have 30 or 40. You know, it may have uh, right. numerous uh, links. We need to keep it... Uh, very, very short and succinct, um, so they can navigate easily and understand where they were at all, at all time. And as we develop more and more sites, we find that those same uh, key navigation areas that they uh, listed early on as important continue to be very, very important for our clients. Great. Um, and so can we talk a little bit about the traffic? Because this is what was one of my main questions when we first started talking. Um, the traffic on mobile, um, and I came to find out that you did have the data behind this. Um, what does the traffic look like? Is it students that are on the ground? Um, can we tell whether it's current students that are going to the mobile site? Can we tell whether it's visitors? Can we tell whether it's outside traffic? And what did you find um, looking at those analytics from your client? Well, yes. Um, we did a, a study because it was a question of one of our schools. Actually, it was Champlain question. They said, you know, is, is the mobile site taking away, number one, from the traffic on the main site? Right. And number two, is it really attracting the first-time visitors? Right. So we took a look at a time period, February 26th, this was a year ago, February 26th to March 28th. Mm -hmm. And what we found were two interesting things. 50% um, of the visitors on the desktop unit were first-time were first visits, mm -hmm. okay, new visits, whereas nearly 78% on the mobile site were new visits. But which also supports uh, the point of using a mobile for reference versus going to in-depth exploration is the average time on site on the mobile site is about a minute and a half versus nearly three minutes on the desktop site. So, you know, it's that kind of information that we're able to back up and say, yes, the, uh, the, the tools are. Now, I can't tell if it's a prospective student, um, although we do know that the majority of our prospective students uh, are logging in when they log into the mobile site. That's where we get our tax signers. Right. Great. Opt-in tax. Yeah, and uh, and that was really helpful for me to understand um, first what what data to look at. Um, you know, my institution does have mobile a mobile site, um, and to think about whether it should be front facing admissions first. Those are some pretty key indicators of things to look at. Um, so now, all institutions um, aren't the same, um, and I know you have a, a pretty varied list of clients. Um, so when you have clients with different kinds of priorities, um, and they're trying to decide what to put on their site, um, what are the kinds of suggestions that you make for those um, 
those institutions that are just getting started? Well, you know, really, it's a good question because it really determines on the institution. For example, um, the one thing that, you know, we don't want to do, and we'll summarize this at the end, is we don't want to try to address the needs of too many different uh, segments of students, for example, undergraduates and graduates at the same time on one site. So for one of our clients, Nazareth College, actually right there in Rochester, um, when you initially enter the mobile site, it asks right away, do you want to go to the main site? Do you want to go to the undergrad site? Or do you want to go to you know, your prospective student or your graduate student? So that way it allows us to refer them to the, uh, to the main website. And then um, we recommend to them some of the things they should do is, you know, really focus, keep it short, short bullets, and do not try to integrate all the aspects of the college advertising campaign into the mobile site. You want to keep the school colors, perhaps some fonts, photographs should be close-ups versus, you know, big, long, broad pictures because you can't really see those on a smartphone. But, you know, it, uh, no letters from the dean because there's no room for that. They are there to really find out about your school, about your institution, what you can do. You know, it's all about, not about you. The brand of your school is in the mind of the student that's looking at that website, and they own the brand. So all you can do is help direct them to understand the brand. And by keeping it clear and succinct, you do a great job. Wow, that's I love that. That's uh, that's quotable right there. Um, and I just tweeted out the link to the Nazareth uh, the Nazareth mobile site. Um, so for those folks who are following along on Twitter, um, I tried to make it clear that that is a mobile site, and maybe you want to check that out on your own mobile yeah. device to really have the true experience. Um, we have a couple other. Um, uh, sites that we can share. And I'm also going to um, provide a link to the Mongoose Research Pinterest page that was a really actually uh, pretty innovative use of Pinterest that I hadn't seen before, but they have all different snapshots of um, different admissions first mobile um, sites. So we'll be sharing that out for you to browse, which will be helpful for those people that are not looking um, on their mobile device tonight. Um, but can we talk a little bit about, um, you know, I, we mentioned the different kind of constituent navigation that Nazareth College is doing. Um, and um, Champlain was a People's Choice winner um, at the EduWeb conference last year. So uh, yes. why do people love that mobile site so much? Well. You know, I think we did a number of things, and if you go to the, if you if you look at the site, um, and I don't know if it's on our interest page, I'm just peeking at it here, but Champlain's in Vermont, and Vermont's known for snow. So instead of, you know, like we do in Buffalo, let's hide the, the fact that we have a lot of snow, uh, Champlain put it right up front and center for really the key photographs. And, um, and again, I made the navigation very simple. Number one, they had their academic programs. You know, a little bit about Champlain, maps and directions to get there. We use, you know, we use things like Google Maps. Mm -hmm. So with your smartphone, you can quickly hit the GPS button and it'll bring you right into the school. And then photos. And photos are so important because they capture the image and the feel of the campus. And if you can't visit the campus, the next best thing is to have some great photos, you know. Yep. Um, and then information about financial aid visits, uh, contact us, which is real important. And again, we let people on all of our sites. We let people have the opportunity to contact us. If you prefer to do an email, we have a button. They can make a phone call instantaneously or they can opt in for text messaging. Now, not all of our mobile colleges have opted in for text messaging. Um, and actually, a couple of them that did not at first are coming back now and saying, I'd like to add that call to the mix because it makes sense. Great. So um, I think one of the clients that is doing the text messaging is St. Mary's. Correct? Yes. Okay, so I have, um, I can tweet out the link to St. Mary's, um, and um, you've noted them as someone who's doing uh, text messaging and this mobile web really effectively. So is there anything that really stands out in your mind um, as to their approach that might be different? Well, I think I, I think they follow the rules. Uh, actually, there's a number of schools. Champlain also uses the text messaging um, mm -hmm. uh, system, but St. Mary's um, just really follows some of the key things we've, we've asked them to do, and they've realized it's important to do. 
They they always send important messages about dates. They make it actually a key part of the communications funnel. So they haven't abandoned their letters, their phone calls, um, their view books, but they mixed text messaging in with the mix so a student doesn't fall through the funnel, you know, through the cracks sure. and think that they don't really care about them or communicating with them on all, all levels. And St. Mary's has, has found that, um, as I said earlier, 33% of their admissions came from the 5% that had opted in for text messaging. And that continues to grow. Now, oh, another, another important thing is we always say if you're using uh, text messaging as part of the mobile app, it gives students the opportunity to opt in at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if they're at a college fair, and, you know, sometimes those, crowd, those tables can be crowded and they can be pretty intimidating for a shy student, um, I have up there, text 313131 to St. Mary's and opt, you know, to reach our mobile site, and then they can opt in, and they can now become part of the admissions process and, and be included in the funnel. Another important Excellent. thing is we tell them, don't ask for too much information. We keep it pretty simple. Mm -hmm. You know, two or three short screens, your name, your address, your maybe your intended major, and uh, when, when you plan on coming in. And then the last so, thing we do is we ask them, do you want to be updated on text for everything, mm -hmm. or are there certain things, like important dates? Do you want to know about activity? So we actually let them drive the bus. Great. Because, yeah, they're the most important part of the equation. And is that something that you have set up in the um, the text messaging database um, so that universities can filter, okay, these messages are about events, these are about deadline reminders, and they're going to only go to these students? Yes, we, uh, we actually built a relational database that interfaces with the school's ERP uh, system. And, and since Dave had worked uh, you know, with Liquid Matrix and Datatel, they're pretty familiar with about every ERP system that's out there. Sure. So the interface um, with the IT people, it's a pretty mm -hmm. simple process. It usually doesn't take that long. Mm -hmm. Once a student opts in for texting, um, they go into a database. We keep track of every message um, they ever received. Um, it interfaces with the school system, so it, it really kind of becomes part of the admissions process, and we can put them in specific. This student's uh, interested in pre-med, only send out texts on pre-med. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, well, we, we've actually had some schools now that are talking to us about using for alumni. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so, part of the fundraising process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've, I have seen that um, at a few different campuses where you can text in to donate um, at an event or something to that effect. So certainly, I mean, uh, it's not just the teens that are texting um, now with mobile um, being so accessible. Um, I think that it, it's that generation gap is kind of <laughs> going away. Um, they definitely text more than I do, but, um, uh, but I'm pretty savvy with it now myself. Awesome. So um, I, I think there's just one last um, example that I want to make sure that we share, um, which was from Gardner Webb. Um, oh, yeah. and they had a, a bit more of a comprehensive look at their mobile design. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. When we went down to, to meet with Gardner Webb, um, they were actually fantastic to work with. And they're the, our most recent site. And um, when we sat with them that day, they showed us a lot of uh, the students are very involved uh, in promoting the campus, and they do a great job, and there's a lot of work that comes out of from the student videos. So they showed us, and, and it's one on the Gardner website, if, if viewers go to the, the link, um, it's the mascot running around and taking a look at, basically giving a virtual tour of the campus. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's pretty funny. Um, yeah. He goes by the campus police, he ends up getting chased by the police, you know, he's a bulldog. But, um, while sometimes we say you have to be careful about putting long, intensive videos on there, these really brought even the, the, the school more to life, prospective students. And, you know, Gardner Webb's are down in Boiling Springs, North Carolina. There's one stoplight in town. So um, there's not a heck of a lot to do down there. Mm -hmm. I think there's two or three restaurants, and that's about it. But it's the kind of place, after looking at the website, I would say, geez, I want to go visit that campus because... It's like they have a lot of fun. They really brought it to love. And Great. they have a few videos as well. I think we have three or four. Yeah, um, 
video is definitely one of my passions um, in marketing. So uh, I'm looking forward to checking out more of that and seeing how um, you can interact with video on web plat platforms. So uh, great to see that uh, other campuses are on board and utilizing their students. Um, I, yeah, love, and I, I love that too. There, there are uh, videos, I believe, are hosted on YouTube, so it's very easy for us to link in and put that link to YouTube without leaving the site. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what is the most challenging. Um, so when you're uh, meeting with colleges and universities, um, what are they coming to you? What's their problem that they're trying to solve? What kind of goal are they not meeting that they're hoping to fill the gap with these kind of communications? Well, I think, you know, uh, I don't think you can listen to the news. Most of our schools are private universities, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the public universities with very, very low tuitions aren't really having a hard time tracking the students. But the private universities are a tremendous competitive battle. And you can't listen to the news these nights without, you know, the talk of student loan debt. And it's painting a pretty ugly pall on things. So they realize that it's getting more and more competitive to reach these uh, potential students. And I think people are realizing that the vast majority uh, and it's not going to go the other way, as it is no Levitt's uh, site that 52% of prospective students visit a mobile site the first time through. So if 52% of them are doing it, you know, guess what, next year it's going to be 62 or 65, and it's going to grow incredibly fast. So yep. the number one challenge they have is how can we cut through the clutter? Yes. And, you know, anybody that's in advertising realizes we see 3,000 uh, messages a day coming at us on the yeah. internet and the web and telephone and mail. And so we need to find a way to cut through the clutter and reach these students directly. And they're saying, how can we do it? How can you help us do that? And we're providing a great tool for them to do it. You know, we're delivering, as we say sometimes, delivering the brand right to the palm of your prospective student's hand. Nice. Um, and you're right with how exponentially fast these mobile devices are getting into those prospective student hands. One of my colleagues yesterday at lunch was talking about buying her 13-year-old daughter an iPhone, and I nearly fainted. Um, but then she was telling me about how Verizon was coming out with a new family plan, and it wasn't going to cost them any more money to put her on a data plan, and she really wants one. And so I um, am pretty confident that those juniors and seniors that we're speaking with are going to have those mobile devices even quicker um, than we expected. So it's definitely time to get ready for the college search process to move over to mobile. Yes. Um, and, you know, and there's just so many different opportunities um, to innovate and be creative in that space that it makes it an exciting piece of technology to work with. Um, and you're referencing Noel Levitz, which um, we reference a lot here on the show. Um, we'll be certain to have that link in the archive post. Um, but before we wrap up, um, I want to make sure that we give um, the viewers some of a breakdown of the conversation. And I know that you can deliver some do's and don'ts for us. Um, so let's break those down. I've got some slides um, that you've prepared that are ready that I can bring up. Um, and I will let you, what are we gonna do first? Do's or don'ts? Let's do the don'ts. Don'ts first, all right. Don'ts first. Excellent. What all not right. to do? Yeah, let's end on a positive note. All right. Okay, um, one of the things we talked about was, you know, do not mix information for different audiences on the same page. So for the viewers that visit the Nazareth website, they'll see that it gives them the opportunity to go to a graduate page or a prospective student, an undergraduate page. And then we will talk to them about what they're most interested in. Um, don't get into a detailed breakdown of academic programs by each individual school, you know, the school of science, the school of whatever, because it's just too much. This is a, this is a very task oriented uh, medium. We're going in there to find some quick information. If we want more, we'll go explore the main site uh, later. Don't let the creative elements get in the way of the task. You know, the most important thing is talking to that student at the level of self-interest and delivering your message. We try to stay away from laborious request forms, especially when you're on a smartphone. You want to put in as little as possible. Um, 
I mentioned before, you know, I know the deans don't like to hear this, but the prospective students don't really want to hear from the deans on their smartphone. They want to find out information. Um, linking to a PDF of a campus map, well, we all know that sometimes we have issues with Apple and Adobe. Um, they don't exactly see eye to eye, so those things don't always come through. And uh, we make it as part of one of our mobile pages, you know, so we make it easy for them to look at it. And then always link to the full site. Uh, it's on my phone, but we do want you to always link to the full site if they want to go there to see more critical content. And then they can get involved with finger flicking and pinching and expanding. So are we on the do's now? We are moving on to the do's. Okay. Um, and the do's are pretty simple, and they make a lot of sense. Um, use lists and bullet points versus long copy. We're looking at things on a little screen. And, you know, when you're designing your mobile site, think about it on a little screen. Don't design it on an iPad or a 22-inch uh, desktop unit and then say, gee, I wonder how it will look there. That's very important. Um, and actually, there was, a, um, I think, a stat that I read somewhere that almost 48% of uh, information is forgotten if it's too much on a little screen. Important, keep your content up to date. Um, nothing will turn off a prospective student quicker than when they see old content. They're very technology aware, and uh, we want to make sure content is up to date and links are not broken. It's very frustrating when we want broken links. Keep your links short. Um, we can have progressive disclosure. If a student wants to keep going through and opening up new pages, that's great. But don't try to jam everything on one page. Use larger buttons. People like me have fat thumbs. And there's nothing worse when I go to press a button on my screen and I go to the wrong page and then I have to back up. So use larger buttons. We always say encourage communication. But the greatest thing about the Internet is it allows you to have instantaneous communication. So if I want to click to call, I can do that. If I want to send an email off my phone or an instant message or uh, enroll in the text messaging database the school office one. And then the most important thing is we, you know, we talked about desired content academic programs, cost, financial aid, events, campus parking and maps. So when mom and dad show up at the school, they're not driving around all frustrated and flustered when they show up 15 minutes late for the event because they couldn't find a place to park. So those are some of the, the, uh, the basic do's and the don'ts you want to stay away from. And I think following those rules, you can't help but to enjoy success with your mobile site. Great. So um, I want to just give you an update on the back channel. So we've now shared those Pinterest um, screenshots, which are going over very well. Um, and we've shared um, it, a summary of these do's and don'ts. Um, uh, I have a recent blog post. So um, if you're looking for a summary, we've sent that out uh, on Twitter and we'll have that in the archive of this post as well. Um, so I'm ready to open it up to questions. If anyone has questions at this time, please feel free to contact us with the admissions live hashtag. Um, if you're watching the archive, you'll um, have links to where to find Marty and myself if you have questions, um, if you're not watching us live. Um, but one question that I have that's coming in right now is um, what kinds of um, measurements are these colleges using to calculate their return on investment for um, investing in, um, I think, are they referring to the mobile, the mobile sites, not necessarily the text messaging? You know, that, that's a great question. I get asked that question all the time. I mean, outside of you know engaging in Google Analytics and taking a look at your number of first-time visitors, as we did in Champlain, mm -hmm. but one of the other things to consider is. Um, when a school builds, puts a new building up on campus, um, you can look at it and say, what well, kind of return on investment the building costs $3 million? And they say, well, you know, it brings our school to the forefront. It shows them we're technology, you know, we're, we're astute, we're state-of-the-art, we're ahead of the class. So a key part is a non-measurable function. And I'm a marketer, so I'm all about measurements. But a key part is being, are you ahead of the curve or are you following Mm -hmm. And having the mobile site and having something that's easy to navigate um, is going to play a key part. Now, we've shown that we're engaging in texting where we can have uh, a substantially higher return on investment because we're getting the vast majority of students that you know, sign up for texting are ending up as being enrollments or at least applying to the school. 
but it's really hard to put a dollar on for ten. Although analytics do show you, you know, you get where the majority of your first time visitors come. Um, so um, let's talk about text messages then. Um, can you give any kind of a comparison of the investment into a kind of uh, communication via text versus some of those other kinds of communications that admissions offices are traditionally using. Um, you know, it doesn't cost us much outside of human resources hours to pick up the phone and have a conversation or email, um, but something like direct mail in comparison can be very costly. How does that compare with something like text? Is it yeah. similarly yeah. as text costly? Messages, text messages cost 10 cents each. 10 cents each. Okay. And, and one of the things about our text messaging system, too, it almost acts like an instant message system. So um, our, our clients launch the text messages to one student or a thousand students at once. Mm -hmm. um, they're personalized with the student's first name or as much information as you want on each one. And the student at any time can respond back on their phone and it will come back to a, a desktop console where the admissions officer can respond to them. Mm -hmm. um, so text messages are 10 cents each. So a school that sends out um, 15,000 text messages over the course of a, a year will um, invest about $1,500 in text messages. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah. And, you know, even we always say the phone call is free, but it's time. Right. And with text messages, you can reach out to an entire segment of the audience in two or three minutes. Great. Great. Um, and one other question that I see that's coming in, um, as you're talking about staying ahead of the curve, um, what other things do you see that um, might be on their way? So it, it seems like you're a little bit ahead on text messaging. Now you're a little bit ahead on this admissions first mobile strategy. Is there any, um, do you have ESP? Um, can, you, can you tune us into anything else that might be um, something to keep our eyes on? Well, I think one of the things uh, that's really cool is, you know, the tablet PCs have kind of revolutionized the way we do things. I do a lot of my presentations off my iPad. Um, I show a lot of websites we've created. It's a great tool. And it makes all the sense in the world for a college admissions counselor who's giving a tour of the school to perhaps stop in front of the, uh, the, the theater and pull up the iPad because the school has got wireless or have a wireless card in the iPad and suddenly hit a video of the latest production that was held and bring to light some of the things that are going on. You know, or to bring them to the gymnasium which 90% of the time is empty and then suddenly do a video of when that gym is packed in the school spirit. You know, and I was a hockey player in college and there was nothing better than being at a live hockey game, college game, because of the abuse took as a player. I mean, it was fun as a player and it's fun as a a crowd, you can bring that to light. So it's bringing the view pads to light. Um, and cool. we think we'll see a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, the, those are fantastic ideas. Those are gems out there that we just delivered on admissions live. So um, if you're not if you're not running with text messaging and mobile, you've got a whole lot to think about now. Um, is there any last um, kind of wise words of wisdom before we sign off? Uh, I'm going to make sure that people know how to contact you, but if you want to share any of that as well, feel free. The, the, the only word, words of wisdom I have is always remember who the most important person is um, in, in the entire campus, and that's the prospective student that's looking at your site right now, uh, because that's the only one that matters. And as I said earlier, they own your brand, so keep it simple, keep it clean, and uh, you know, send your love to them, keep them happy, and you'll be very successful. Great. Great. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on. Um, and I hope to stay in touch. And as you are doing more and more innovative things, we'd love to have you on the show again. Um, and for those folks that are tuning in, um, you can find Admissions Live every single week on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time um, right here on higheredlive.com. Be sure to check out the archive. And if you have any questions for Marty, um, you will know how to find him. We are using your Twitter handle at Marty Aegis. Although I did look you up on Twitter and saw that you weren't super active. So get ready because people people know about you now. They know where to find you now. Um, but we'll also share some contact information of Marty um, where you can reach him um, at Mongoose Research. So thanks again for coming on and we'll see you all next week.
X 